Dry eye syndrome is one of the most common eye disease. Dry eyes, also known as dry eye disease, dry eye syndrome, and keratoconjunctivitis sicca. Dry eye characterized by redness, burning, stinging, foreign body sensation, pruritus itching. Photophobia. Epiphora, or tearing, meaning watery eyes. This symptom is often counterintuitive. This is due to dryness leading to pain or irritation, that results in intermittent excess production of tear. Called tearing, or epiphora. Pain is a broad term, and it can be sharp and dull. Which may be localized to some part of the eye, behind the eye, or even around the orbit. Eye redness is a common complaint, which can worse after stop using eye drops against redness. Which is called rebound effect. Blurry vision particularly intermittent blurry vision. Tired eyes. Closing the eyes may provide relief to some individuals with dry eyes. Main mechanism of dry eye is loss of homeostasis of the tear film, which causes physical symptoms. The tear film is approximately 2 to 5 m thick over the cornea and is composed of three main components. These components, lipid, aqueous, and mucin, are often described as layers. Dry eye is clinically subdivided into two subtypes, one with decreased tear secretion, and one with increased tear evaporation. Commonly these two is combined. Dry eye causes. Medications can cause dry eye such as, systemic medications, antihistamines to treat allergy. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and other drugs. Chemical or thermal burns that scar the conjunctiva. Ocular allergies. Computer or device usage as this may lead to decreased blinking when looking at the screen. Excess or insufficient dosages of vitamins, particularly vitamin A deficiency which can lead to xerophthalmia. Systemic disease such as Sjogren's syndrome and rheumatoid arthritis. Dry eye disease is more common in women. It is one of the most common eye disease. Affects 5-50% to in population-based studies. Dryness is a common problem for contact lenses wearers. Dry eye disease has a significant association with anxiety disorder and depression. To make correct diagnosis is important. Because, if an incorrect clinical diagnosis is made and anti-allergic drugs or epitheliotoxic antibiotics are prescribed, dry eye may worsen. Treatment. Patient education is important and includes the facts that dry eye is a chronic disease that treatment is long-term and may be slow to take effect. The avoidance of aggravating factors such as cigarette smoke, dry heating air, air conditioning, and others is a fundamental part of treatment. Artificial tears are the mainstay of therapy for all severity grades of dry eye. A large number of preparations based on polyvinyl alcohol, povidone, hydroxypropyl guar, cellulose derivatives, and hyaluronic acid are available. Depending on the severity of disease, from low viscosity preparations to high viscosity gels, carbamides, and ointments can be used. They shouldn't contain benzalkonium chloride, an epitheliotoxin, as a preservative. Corticosteroid eye drops, for two to four weeks, improve the symptoms and clinical signs of moderate to severe dry eye disease. Long term use of corticosteroids causes serious side effects, raised intraocular pressure, cataract. And for this reason corticosteroid eye drops are recommended only for short-term use. Tetracycline analogues have been successfully used in small controlled studies to treat meibomian gland dysfunction and rosacea, because they have antibacterial and anti-inflammatory properties. Azithromycin, also has anti-inflammatory capacities. Azithromycin 1% has been successfully treat blepharitis and meibomian gland dysfunction. Temporary occlusion of the tear ducts by small collagen or silicone plugs, punctal plugs, is effective in patients with severe aqueous-deficient dry eye disease. 